the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, welcome in a special way our guests and visitors who come with us to be part of this body of Christ as we are fed and nourished in this Eucharist. And so together as we celebrate this gift of Christ's gift to himself, of himself to us in his body and his blood, let us turn to the Lord to be fed, that he may continue to, to guide us, to heal us, and to nurture us with his love. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread come down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the way to, re to eternal life in Christ. Christ, have mercy. Christ. Lord Jesus, you are body and blood given for the life of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, so that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite the children to come forward at this time for their liturgy of the word. This morning we send you forth as together we listen to this word of God, Jesus, who promises to, to give us all that we need in a very special way in the Eucharist. 
the gift of his body and his blood, that we may grow in his love. So go in peace. You can hear it together. Go and listen to the word of God. Go and listen to the word of God. God has the words of everlasting life. God has the words of everlasting life. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. With you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sends me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unless your an unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. I believe all of us have experiences in our life that were very difficult at the time. But as we look back on them after the passing of years, we look back and see how very blessed we were. And for many of you that, that are married and, and started your families, maybe those early struggles of raising your firstborn, 
Maybe those struggles of build, you know, finally getting to the point where you build your home. Maybe starting your own business. All those things that, are very, that were very difficult at the time. We can look back in a certain sense of fondness. You know, for myself, when I was here as an associate um, 21 years ago, those difficult times that we had those, well, I was with you for what, six, seven months after the fire. And in those, those months, my job was to make sure that we had all of the things that we needed so we could celebrate Eucharist, primarily at Third Reformed Church and Jim the Chapel at Hope College. Those of you that were here at the time knew it was a very difficult time for all of us, sometimes not even knowing what church we we're going to be in, especially at Holy Week. I think we were in five different churches in Holy Week. It was difficult, but yet there was something that happened in our community, and I know that happened in my own life. Knowing that I had to depend completely on God and depend completely on so many people, not only the members of our congregation, but the members of two, three, four, five other congregations as well. And so looking back at that, there's a certain sense of fondness because there was a sense that I was depending on God, depending on others. That's the sense in, in the Old Testament that we hear in the book of Deut Deuteronomy, that we hear in so many of the prophets, that harking back to the time that was very difficult in the life of the Israelites, those 40 years in the desert, who would want to spend 40 years out in the desert? Who would want to live under those harsh conditions? Nobody. But yet they look back at them with fondness because they learned in those 40 years to depend entirely on God. And when they got to the point of starvation or dying from thirst, what did God do? God provided for them. We hear in today's reading from the book of Deuteronomy where, where God sent bread from heaven. God sent manna. So even though the people were close to starvation, even though they were complaining against God, God took care of them. God gave them what they needed. God sustained them. They learned over those 40 years. And it took it's a long time. They finally learned how to depend completely on God. Not on themselves, but on God and on one another. I believe that's an important context as we celebrate this, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. This great gift that God gives to us. Do we truly appreciate it unless we go back to that attitude that the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy is calling the, the Hebrew people to? that sense of being led by God, that sense of dependence on God. Because what we hear in today's gospel, Jesus explaining how he now is the bread from heaven, that his very flesh is that new manna, Jesus who wants to provide for us and does provide for us in giving us all that we need. And in this sense, not primarily in the physical realm, but in that spiritual realm. So that he is the food for our journey of life. His flesh is true food that brings us into his life. Because we can look at it in that sense of God's life coming to us, which is true as we receive these sacred elements of his body and his blood. But at the same time, St. Augustine reminds us it's we that are being assimilated into that very life of Christ. And as we're reminded of that, that's the challenge that I said before all of us. When we use those terms about receiving communion, we can think of it or we can say it in a sense of almost a passive, disengaged way. It is anything but that. Receiving communion. Think about that word communion. Because the, the word communion is, is just about being what, what St. Augustine reminds us about. That we are brought into that communion. We are brought into that life of Christ. As St. Paul says in that second reading. That we are, let me get the words right. 
that the cup of blessing which we bless is that participation in the blood of Christ and the bread that we break is that participation in the body of Christ. The word that Paul uses in Greek is koinonia, communion, community. That we are brought into that life, into that body of Christ, into the blood of Christ. So can you see now that when we say receiving communion is anything but passive, God is working in us. God is bringing us into that communion. Not only in that sense of God in ourselves, but with one another. God is transforming our lives, but transforming who we are as a body of Christ. I believe what we need to see is, as we prepare ourselves to receive communion, as we prepare ourselves to, to enter into this great mystery, the source of which is God's love for us, God's desire to feed us, God's desire to give us his life, and God's desire to be brought into that communion, not only with Christ, but in the Trinity, that communion of Father, Son, and Spirit. Are our, are our eyes open? Are we recognizing what this communion truly means, what this communion truly is? That great transformation that's taking place in our lives, in all of our lives. The Israelites needed those 40 years. That journey from slavery to living as a free people didn't come easy. It wasn't something that just happened. It was that process of allowing themselves to be led, allowing themselves to be fed from that bread of heaven. In a sense, they as individuals, they in a community were transformed in that dependency on God. And that's what we're called to every time that we celebrate Eucharist, is to be led by God, to be transformed by God in this great gift, into that communion, that communion with our God, and that communion with one another. Traditionally, Corpus Christi is, is a time for, for processions, even though we today at our parish don't have that procession. What it signifies is a sense that God is walking with us in our journeys of life that God is guiding us, and God is leading us to everlasting life. A procession is a beautiful way of showing that, of doing that, of recognizing the primacy of Christ and the intimacy of Christ in our lives. But even though we don't have a Corpus Christi procession today, we are called to live just that. We are called to live, led by Christ, and we are called to recognize that presence of Christ that is here in a very powerful way in this Eucharist, in his body and his blood, but continues to walk with us in our everyday lives. And so as we celebrate this great solemnity, as we celebrate this great gift, as we celebrate and receive the bread from heaven, let us as such be transformed into that body of Christ. We stand as together, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, and substantial with the Father. To him all things are made. 
first nine minutes for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, who is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess to the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray now for each other and for all people who are called to live in unity. For the whole church, that our participation in the Eucharist may strengthen our unity and our desire to build the human community, we pray. Lord, hear our For the world's refugees who yearn to belong to a welcoming community and for all people separated from their loved ones, we pray. Lord, hear our For those who feel unworthy of receiving the body and blood of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, catechists, pastors, and all who are responsible for teaching our children the meaning of the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers and stepfathers, grandfathers and godfathers, for all men who serve and nurture young people, for their strength and tenderness, courage and wisdom, generosity and faithfulness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For families struggling with childcare and time to be together during these summer months, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our midst who are suffering, fearful or discouraged, especially the sick and the dying, and for those who have died, including Ted and Eddie Silva, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, you fed your people in the, in the desert, and you continue to feed us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus. Make us worthy participants of the Eucharistic feast and help us to remember that we are one body in him. May this gift empower us to help strengthen the whole human community. We pray in Jesus' holy name, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end do we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James and John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, 
Gracious, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we hear this word and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of eternal salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this partition participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us in the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Amid us we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, may peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And please be seated for our announcements. After Mass, the Knights of Columbus will be distributing Tootsie Rolls and Lifesavers. Donations collected will go toward purchase of an ultrasound machine for an area pregnancy center. And please be sure to pick up a bulletin for more information on these and other important activities at the parish. We have now received 272 pledge cards totaling over $95,000 and pledges and outright gifts to the Catholic Services Appeal. So that puts us at 64% of our goal. So thank you to everyone who has contributed so far. And if you've not yet submitted your pledge, we hope to hear from you soon. And at this time, it's um, Father's Day, so we'd like to have a special blessing for, for fathers that are here present, or if they're not here with us today, we pray for them wherever they may be. So everybody, please stand. And if your father, your husband, or whomever is next to you, just place a hand on the shoulder, and please bless them. Everybody stand, and together we, we bless our fathers. And God, our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers, that the example of their faith and love shine forth, and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.